Hello and welcome to section 6 of our course Improving Machine Learning Model Performance, Feature Engineering and Hyperparameter Tuning. In this section we are going to cover a bunch of techniques and we will be covering them intuitively. We will not be going into too much detail but we will cover them enough so that you can apply them in your real world machine learning projects. Specifically we are going to cover in this section identifying missing values, data cleaning and scaling, converting numerical features to categorical, outlier detection techniques, using log of numerical features to remove distribution skew, determining feature importance, deriving additional features from important features, model performance improvement with cross-validation, model performance improvement with hyperparameter tuning, grid search and random search to find best hyperparameters. This basically belongs to the category of model selection. So as you can see, there are a bunch of techniques that we are going to cover in this section. In this specific video, we are going to cover identifying missing values and data cleaning and scaling. So let's get started. Since we have covered most of these techniques before, so this section is mostly going to be about code walkthrough. There will be very little theory and slides. So let's start with importing a bunch of libraries as we always do. We will walk through a set of utility functions that we have written specifically for different type of pre-processing tasks that we will come across. What we will do is we'll just skip the functions right now and as we have the need to call them, we will come back to them and one by one and then walk through the code. The data set we are going to use for this example is called Iowa housing data set. We have come across two housing data sets before, the Boston housing data set and the California housing data set. They were both regression problems and so is this one. The difference is that this one has a lot more features than the previous data sets. So this is a good example to consider when we are going to do some feature engineering because there are quite a bunch of missing values in different features. So we'll get a lot of practice. This is the specific link for this competition. It's this competition has been created to specifically predict sales prices and practice feature engineering. And there are already 4,970 teams and the purpose is to practice creative feature engineering and advanced regression techniques like random forest and gradient boosting. I already downloaded the data set. The data set has been placed in this path on my computer. Yours will be different obviously. So I created a folder called Iowa housing and I'm going to read the raw data frame and the test because there are two different data sets. One is for testing where we are not given the target variable or the values of the target variable and there is the actual training data set where we are given the target variable. That's pretty normal in Kegel competitions. The pandas flag to read CSV low memory equal to false means pandas will process the CSV file internally in chunks which is useful for large files and it saves memory while processing. If we are sure about the data types that Panda is not going to get confused about data types. It's a good safe practice to use low memory equal to false while using read CSV. So once we have the data frame, we can just print its shape and information about it. So as you can see, there are 80 columns in the test and 81 in the raw frame because there, the target column is also included in the raw frame, whereas it's not in the test frame. Let's print the info. So here we have ID, which is just a number or incrementing number. This is MS subclass. Everything is like 1460, which is the size of our data for the training set. And there are a bunch of missing values, as you can see. We only have 91 values for this particular field and only seven values for houses with pools. Let's describe the data frame. So as usual, we get a bunch of counts, minimum, maximum values, standard deviation and percentiles for each of the columns. All the 80 columns are not listed here. The sale price this is our target column. Now the first thing we do is we just copy the raw data frame into another data frame just so that we leave the original one alone. And another important thing we need to do is to extract our target variable into a variable called y which is in this case sale price we drop it from the data frame that we are going to process next which is the df data frame 
which we used to get the copy of the raw one. So we have written a function called extract and drop target column. The reason we have done that is because this is such a common task that we need to perform on almost all data frames or data sets we are going to use. So let's look at this function line by line. So it takes a data frame bf in it takes the name of the target column and another flag called in place equal to false by default which means that it's not going to modify the incoming data frame it's going to create a copy if in place equal to false so we just check if the in place is there we just directly have our local variable df 2.2 df in otherwise we create a copy in the local variable df now there could be two cases that the target variable is numeric type, which in this case it is because it's a regression problem. So we have a sale price, which is a floating point value. So if it is not numeric type in the data frame, then it is categorical type. For all categorical types, what the pandas data frame stores is a subfield called cat in each value of the variable which is categorical and the cat also contains the codes which are the actual codes of the categories or assigned to categories. So what we do is we assign first temporarily the codes to the column in the target variable and then we assign to y the values of the codes. So codes also has another sub field called values which is assigned to y. So y now contains a bunch of values for each of the row of the target variable if it is categorical if it's not numeric so is numeric d type this is a utility function which is available in pandas.api.types is a string type and is numeric type these are very nice utility functions that you will find handy now on the other hand if it's numeric then we just simply assign it to y and we drop them from the data frame itself and we return the data frame and the target variable column as a separate entity or a separate point as series. Next, what we are going to do is we're going to combine train and test sets into a single data frame so that any pre-processing, cleaning, scaling and the like or, or any feature engineering we do would be on the combined data set. So we don't have to repeat it for the test set. To do that, we use pd.concat for df and df test and we reset the index reset index what it does is because test set indexes also start from zero and the train test indexes also start from zero for both the indices it will just concatenate them and it will just number them starting from the train and continuing on to the test another thing we do is we drop the id field because we really don't require it it has no predictive value before combining, we also store the number of rows in the train test and the test set and we also store the IDs of the test set because we'll be needing them when we have to submit our solution to Kegel if we decide to do that. The next very important thing is to get a separate list of categorical and numerical columns. And the way we do that is we have a utility function called get category columns by type and we pass the combined data frame and so let's look at this function what it does so here is the function and for column name and column values in df.items so df.items will return the name as well as the values for each column of the data frame so if the column values are of a string type we append them as a string with the column name and the type as a string as a tuple in the list if they are not a string and they are not numerical then we just categorize them as categorical. So when we print our categorical columns returned by our function, most of them are string columns because if you look at there, we have mostly these object types, which are strings basically. And there are 43 out of 80 columns, which are string type or categorical in nature. From this list, what we can do is we can just get the first value of the tuple, which will give us the name of the column, which we want as a separate list and we get this list. So these are our categorical columns. And to get the numerical columns, what we can do is just anything that is not categorical in combined dot columns is going to be treated as numerical. We can do either this or we can also get it from another function called get numerical columns it has this is numeric d type check. So it's a kind of a counterpart of the categorical function.
the shape of the combined is 79 because we dropped the id column you can just print the head of the combined just to see if everything is in order so there are a lot of missing values still 